My name's M. Well, it isn't really, but for reasons I'll explain later, I've had to hide my identity. For over half my life, I've been looking into conspiracy theory. I have learned that not everything we've been taught and the narrative in the mainstream, even what we were taught at school or is in the mainstream science domain, is necessarily true. Some of these conspiracy theories have over time turned out to be conspiracy facts. Many of these people, for the first time during a time of confusion, fear and hope, have been looking into the conspiracy theory world and have been taken in by something that I also discovered. There was a man who was claiming to be the rightful King of England and has even been telling us that the current crop of royals are illegitimate. This is the story about how I discovered Greg Hallett, how when I went down this metaphorical rabbit hole, I researched and found out that I had a journey that I had no idea awaited me. This is the story of a guy who is allegedly king and my journey to get to the bottom of the truth. Pope's abdicated, the Queen's abdicated, and I've been named in movies. I've named myself in the documents with these titles. Joseph Gregory Hallett. I don't know if any of you have become aware of the claims of this man. He makes out that he is the rightful inheritor of the title Christ and also the direct descendant of Anne Boleyn and Walter Riley, which somehow makes him the rightful king of England and the territories and countless other things. He claims the rightful ownership of basically everything, you, me, the entire world, the Catholic Church, uh, you name it. <laughs> you might find it shocking, but the truth is there for you to make your own mind up. We have a new king! I implore you to do your own research and follow your own white rabbit. This whole QAnon movement, the whole revolution was started by an expression that says, follow the White Rabbit. And the letter that Greg has from Queen Victoria has got the White Rabbit on. With this ascension to the throne, and the current situation with the coronavirus, is this all tied in? The madness of all of this, you know, one of my favorite expressions was, I was telling my friend, I said, listen, I'm gonna go and interview this man in England who claims he has this right to ascend the throne. And he said, you're talking science fiction. And I, it took me a second and I said to him, I said, look at your life. You've been banged up for three months, locked down, mm -hmm. can't see your loved ones. Mm -hmm. You gotta wear a mask to go out. I said, what science fiction? We're living in science fiction. What did you guys think when you first saw um, that Greg Hallett, well, your brother Greg, uh, was um, claiming himself to be the king? Well, um... It had been going on for quite some time. It wasn't an... Um, no surprise. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he was Chancellor before that, so there's always a step yeah. up, isn't there, with somebody who's delusional? Yeah. You know, yeah. and it just more and more grandiose. Um, That's right. You know, he's been, he's been making up ridiculous stuff for 30 Ever. years, so it, it, it gives us a good laugh. We think we yeah. all think that he should have been a comedian. Yeah. Because so, he was funny, he talks funny. But then he puts in all this stuff that, oh my God, he's serious. So yeah. we did, um, I think our initial thoughts were like just a laugh because he's just ridiculous. But um, then it was more concerned for the people that are giving him money. Different people contacted Mandy and then about two days later, different people contacted me, both on Messenger, just saying things like, do you know Greg Hallett? Is he, um, is he your brother? When's he going to be king? Do, um, do you know oh. he's ripping people off? 
and then I was like, well, you know, if he's asking people for money. Yeah, then, that's right. So you guys heard that he, that lots of people were giving him money, and that's the point where you thought, well, it's not just funny anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's affecting people's lives now. Yeah, and, and but he, has, he has lived off donations for a lot of years. Hmm. I found out some information beforehand that you know people had donated to him big money as well to help him with his research for his books, um, some of the other claims he was making, and then obviously he was claiming that um, Francisco Manuel was the rightful king, that Queen Liz uh, was illegitimate. So the story goes that obviously Victoria had this this child and he was a legitimate heir, and he was exiled to Portugal. But when he came back in secret, Queen Victoria knighted him king, but didn't tell anyone, of course. And then sort of, you know, he, he kind of died years ago, and, and no one knew the truth. But then his direct descendant, Francisco Manuel, was saying, I think as far back as 2006, or maybe even earlier, that, that he was the rightful king. And that's when Greg of caught up with him and decided to push Francisco's claim. So, Greg was saying that this Francisco guy was the rightful heir to the throne. And what I don't understand is how it went from that. I mean, I, I think I could understand. I think kind of Greg and Francisco maybe fell out because he's just disappeared off the face of the earth, apparently. And Greg kind of then yeah. came with him and started claiming himself to be the King of England. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he, I, think, I think Francisco... I think he might be related to the actual royal family that was deposed way back because when Portugal became a republic in about 1975, 74, 75. Yeah. And, and so any pretense of royalty had gone because when I spoke to some Portuguese friends, um, they all knew of Francisco. They call him Francisco. And they'd all heard of him. They said, yeah, the story's true. When the royalty was disbanded there because it became a republic, then they would have been, if royalty had stayed on, they would have been, he would have been the heir. Sure. But Greg wanted to make it for if, the whole of England and everywhere. If he was the rightful heir to the throne of Portugal, it doesn't necessarily mean he'd be the rightful heir to the English throne. No, 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 no but that's why that's where Queen Victoria handily comes in. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's but, that's but, Greg's <laughs> taking it. <laughs> So, I mean, I think, but then where do you go from there to, to Greg? And, and that's, that's what I'm interested in. You uh, found out about him pushing his claims, you found that funny, but then you realised actually lots of people are being scammed out of their, out of their hard-earned yeah. money. And you decided to make, is that, that the point you decided to make a video? Yeah. 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 Well, the, um, the girl, Raya Sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. She, she, uh, she asked us if she could do an interview. And we did the interview, sure. but it was about 21 minutes long. And she did it with the phone, and you will have seen it. But I have, yeah. she, did, she had trouble uploading it because of its size, so we did, we, we did another one while we were on a roll, while we had everything there. And um, and then we ended up having to put it on Facebook because it wouldn't fit anywhere else. And just right. apologise to family and friends and said, please ignore this. <laughs> a, lot, a lot probably didn't bother to watch, but you know, mm -hmm. a lot did. They sent messages of you know condolence and, oh, God, that guy again. <laughs> <laughs> What's his newest claim? To be the king yeah, of yeah. England and yeah. the whole world? Oh, wow. Ooh. King of the world. Yeah. Because a okay. lot of our friends have known Greg since he was young. Mm. So they're still our friends, but they're not his friends. So that tells you something for a start. Yeah, Greg that, does, that does tell us a lot. Greg yeah. doesn't have any old friends. He doesn't have old relationships because he uses people and moves on. Mm -hmm. so, and Rick would have told you the same. It's a massive common theme, yeah. So obviously Rick is a friend, still a friend of your guys, and uh, I'm in contact with Rick. And uh, yeah, Rick has told me, you know, that, that that's exactly you know the same for him. You know, just cut ties, moved on. And then you've got Tom Carhill, who um, who Greg moved in with in. Uh, yeah. London for four months and then was a friend of his for a couple of years. Uh, again, Greg had moved out. Greg was wanting to move back, but Tom had already filled that room with someone else who was paying because Greg wasn't paying, of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so then Greg cut ties with him. Uh, moved yeah. on. I've never heard of him since. Uh, and then this Mark Windows guy who he'd moved in with, cut ties with him. And then the latest, you know, and I, tried to did, I did try to talk to this Natalie Williams. Um, so she'd fundraisers for him she'd done videos with him she was in constant contact with him was promoting him and suddenly 
he went cold turkey on her and she and she couldn't believe it. She just sort of, sort of said, that's not Greg. He's been murdered. That's a clone. Um, you know, and, and all this stuff is bless her. I mean, like a lot of people, uh, you know, you pull well over, over their eyes and, and you'll disappear and, or, you know, they just they don't want to believe it. They believe yeah. in believing and that's what's happening with a lot of people, I think, at the moment. And that's why I want to make these videos. Yeah, but, and Greg's definitely yeah. sociopathic. And the fact that, you know, that people won't, um, people won't comment with you or acknowledge you or have a conversation with you about it or let you say anything is, you know, I mean, that's the cult aspect of it. They don't want to know. So soon after discovering Greg, uh, I noticed that he was being promoted on Charlie Ward's channel. Now, uh, this guy had gone from around 2,000 subscribers to in the tens of thousands of subscribers. And they've gone from sort of hundreds of views to tens of thousands of views. I mean, this really took his uh, platform. It took off after interviewing Greg. We can see here uh, King John Part 3. Uh, 90k he was sitting at about you know a thousand views ish 3,000 after King John part 2 but here we can see a drastic dip but it goes back into the hundreds and the very low hundreds multiplayer is off for made for kids videos another little anomaly all these videos every single one of these is selected to be made for kids which I'm sure as many of you know that make content yourself and upload to this platform you have to select very specifically whether it's made for kids or not and yeah all of his every single one says it's made for kids but it goes to 90 views you know this one here 62 views um and yeah if we go back this is bef sort of before the king stuff kind of came out not that he wasn't aware of it but yeah just check the sponsor you know he's got to get in less than a hundred views on a video and he's sponsored by this Rosicrucian Greco Roman Knights Templar symbolic vodka of all things sipping vodka in this interview was Charlie Ward's good friend Jack Kidd who I will later talk more about there was, of course, no mention of Francisco Manuel and what Greg was previously doing to promote this guy as the rightful king because these guys were interested in Greg's story claiming he was king and that's what they would keep to. Now, uh, in the interviews, he talked about the uh, Buckingham Palace uh, uh, claims, uh, those with the, the crests and the guards and whatnot. But he also addresses the videos that his sisters and mother made. One thing uh, of slight concern is uh, you've got a couple of sisters that seem to be causing um, a little bit of havoc, whether through jealousy or just being nasty sisters. I don't really understand, but um, can you, could you possibly explain why your sisters are attacking you? Uh, they always have. They always have. Even if we haven't seen them for, you know, six or seven years, and because I was living overseas and, you know, in the UK, and, and we'd get together as a family, and um, and the first thing he'd, when he walked in the room, the first thing he'd do was say something to us that was completely and insulting. utterly insulting. He wouldn't say hello. He would just insult first. Yeah. Always just insult first. And you think, why do I even say hello to him? Why do we Yeah, right. Yeah. And part of the story, part of the prophecy is kept in fairy tales. And the fairy tale we're looking at now being fulfilled is Cinderella, right? The two ugly sisters. So I'm going for the throne and I've got two ugly sisters and an evil mother who are trying to draw me back, sabotage me, do everything they can so I can't get to... Buckingham Palace throne room, right? They just don't want it to happen because it shows up all of their evil negativity. So what you've got in this video is Greg's narcissism shining through. Just count how many times you can hear him make a personal insult towards his sisters about their looks. He says that um, he's not sure what gender Tam is, uh, his sister Tam is. I mean, that's that's just pure narcissism the amount of attacks that greg does on his sisters during this video 
and the video is meant to be about you know Jack Kidd is asking um, why his sisters made a, made a video about him and the only things that his sisters kind of say is that he's delusional and don't give him money um, but they actually say some nice things that he's a, a very funny guy see that squig with his finger up his nose because um, he really is hilariously funny he is a real funny character they just want him to get some psych, you know some mental help um, so I don't see anything really nasty in the videos in the videos that his sister made but uh, from the off as soon as he mentions um, Greg's sisters you see Greg kind of pipe up and straight away talk about how he's been trying to get rid of them for years uh, about how they've been trying to sabotage him and apparently this is them trying to sabotage him but all I see is uh, you know two sisters and you know an, an 85 year old mother who seems so lovely just simply uh, stating their experience with Greg and and these experiences with Greg and his character profile matches up with other people that um, have spoken about Greg that know that knew him from when, his past my brother and two sisters were heroin users my brother is still a career drug user from a la uh, from a young age and I've got two really ugly sisters my brother said to me once he said you realize your two sisters are throwbacks and I said, what's a throwback? And he says, when they come out of the womb, you want to throw them back in, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> whoa, yeah. So, um, so I've, got, I've got two ugly sisters who are, um, uh, they've, they've always kind of just haunted me. And, um, and basically, you know, they've, they've put out a video, which I haven't been able to see yet, because I, I, it appears that I'm the only person who's blocked from seeing that video. But they're saying, no, 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 he's not this, he's not this, not royals, no. And then my brother's apparently putting up that he's the king of England. You know, so it's like, they can't even, they can't even work together. They've had so much drugs, right? Um, Just one quick thing, though. You haven't actually seen them for how many years? Quarter of a century. I've stayed away from them for over a quarter of a century, since 1993. Wow. Yeah, so do you think they don't, they've got to save for themselves considering they haven't spoken to you for a quarter of a century. Years we thought we you know would invite them to things, you know, if like when you know different things the family would get together, we'd all get together in Byron Bay and our brothers and and we'd invite them and say, Look, we're going to all be in Australia, you know, such such time, you know, come and join us, you're more than welcome, you know, the kids will be here as well, you know, which will be including his, and um, and we'd just get nothing. And at the same time, we'd be doing this, we'd be saying, why are we doing this? Because he's only going to be horrible to us if he does come, mm. you know. But yeah. we were sort of a mum as much as anything, you know. So, to, but, um, yeah, so we just gave up in the end. She's given up grieving for him, really, now. Yeah, yeah. She's, she I'm, doesn't I'm glad she has, because I'd hate to feel, to feel that she was still being, you know, greatly affected uh, by all this. She, she says, I don't know if you should put this in, because it, it, it might hurt if his daughter ever sees it, that she doesn't miss him anymore. Mm. So, and that says a lot about a mother. Mm. Absolutely. That must be hard for a mother to, mother to get to that point, you know. Yeah. But the person that she did love isn't the person that he became. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. You know. Different man. Yeah. 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 Well, a bit different. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't seen them for a quarter of a century. They're ugly. They're, they're two ugly sisters and they get no attention. So as soon as I get my first spike of attention, I've been trying to delete my family for a quarter of a century, but they keep just hanging on and, and you know, just coming out with all this bullshit story, just, just following me around spreading rumours. Yeah. And it's, it's really horrible. But it is the fulfilment of the Cinderella story. Yeah. And my mother's equally as evil. And they would just sabotage everything I did. And watch Charlie Ward. Um, watch how about seven minutes in of just one insult after the other. Watch his face. He looks fed up. He looks annoyed. He wants to move on. He's had enough of hearing about Greg's sisters. Simply because all that Greg's doing is just below the belt child, childish insults. And then my brother, who was a drug dealer from the age of like, 15, but he's actually using drugs from the age and, and, and kind of you know getting trained by the government as a drug dealer from the age of 10 um what he'd do is he'd, he'd um i'd be an architect in town and he would come in from australia and he would um borrow borrow my car and drive around and he would sell drugs to teenagers 
and then hand the car back to me in the morning or just basically put the keys back where they were and not tell me. And then all these women would go, oh, we're not using you as an architect because you're a drug dealer. And I'm going, I'm not a drug dealer. Yeah. But he was using my car, right, to sell drugs, which meant that I couldn't get any work in that town. Okay. You know, that sort of sabotage, right? Yeah. And, and um, <laughs> my, my older sister is um, possessed. Like she's, she's actually a witch. She laughs like a witch. And she stabbed herself in the eye with a knitting needle and went right through the pupil. And then she, um, a few years later, she got a pair of scissors and she's going for me like the scissors got to hair. And my brother's hand comes in and grabs a hand, right? And then the whole family, this is when I'm like 12, the whole family just, no, 14, the whole family split up. She, we boarded her and then we all left the city and drove four hours away, lived four hours away from her because she's so possessed. Right? And so, when when he was about 12, mm -hmm. I'd thrown a pair of scissors at him, or I'd gone to throw a pair of scissors at him, right, yeah. and I grabbed the scissors. Um, but in actual, what, what actually happened was I was sewing, and he was hassling me, punching me, and you know, being a, just being a 12-year-old dick. And mm -hmm. he punched me, he punched me on my developing breast, so, and that's and it really hurt. So I, I picked up the scissors and threw them at him. I mean, they weren't open or anything, you know, they wouldn't even have yeah. hit him but, and wouldn't have done any damage. And then a few days later, I had this black as my jumper bruise come out on my boob and I thought, oh God, it's going to rot and I'm going to lose oh, a hole in my boob. So I went and showed mum because I hadn't said anything. And I went and showed mum, said, no, look what Greg did, he punched me. And so she called him over and he said, oh, well, she threw a pair of scissors at me. And so I got the blame. <laughs> oh. Because because I you know I was thinking well afterwards after I've been told off you know for throwing the scissors, um, I thought actually I threw the scissors because he punched me. Yeah, and, yeah. And then you went anyway. uh, like a, a massive black, you know. Yeah. Well, it was it was actually quite small, but it was so dense and so big oh. that I thought it had, it had got, you know had gone all the way through. But you know my fourteen year old brain. He would do things like that. <laughs> my other sister, um, Tam, is like, I didn't know what gender she was. Right? My friends would come around, you know, my rowing friends, and all my buddies would come around, and they go, oh, I had a chat to your brother. I go, what? <laughs> and we're <laughs> sister. I think uh, we don't know. We don't know. We, we don't know what, you know? And she's slow. You know, she was slow. She was, um, I was in the ace stream, and she was in the, um, just above, the the ones that um, walk the, entry level. Bad, the ones that walk like this, you know, you know. Well, I think trip. we've established why why they're having a dig. So if we can move on from there, <laughs> please. <to> the journey. <laughs> His um, comedy though is always at somebody's expense. Mm. Yeah, which again, it's not their physicality or their mentality, their, their sexuality, intelli intelligence, just the way they walk, anything. Yeah, he's mm. very cruel in that respect. Mm. Very. And he's been like that always for a long, long, long time. Yeah. Always, he's always been. Um, yeah, so, so basically what was happening is that um, Prince Philip and Queen Elizabeth II were, were uh, the biggest heroin suppliers on the planet. And they were targeting our family with heroin from a very young age. And the people that were organising children to be drug dealers was the Minister of Broadcasting, Sir Roger Douglas. And instead of getting convicted of pedophilia, he got a traffic fine and was given a knighthood. Wow. You know? Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Fascinating. So that's what we're up, that's what we're up against so, as we speak. If we start with the, the line, the bloodline and the... Um, to clarify the line, Jack, you can sort of... So you decide. Who seems like the really nasty one? Who seems like the one making up lies? Is it the guy pretending or saying that he is the rightful king of England um, and he owns the world? Is it the guy that's saying that uh, his sisters are ugly? How many times during this video? Uh, he keeps making personal attacks on them for their looks. He mentions that Amanda is... is uh, not mentally stable. I have to ask you who, lex, who looks less mentally stable. Um, for me, that's Greg. Um, also, you know, he says that his family put Amanda in boarding and moved four hours away. Well, my only question is then why 
are the whole of his family uh, and friends uh, still in contact with his sisters and, and mother. Um, why are they all sort of together on this? And why are they talking, you know, as if Greg is the narcissistic one? And I truly believe that's because he is. And he's making up these things. And it's not even that he's making anything substantial up. It's just all insult. It's just pure slander the whole way through the video. So I'm currently the owner of the world. <laughs> In all honesty, do people want a self-appointed king to rule the world? One who insults people for their physical being? For questioning his outrageous claims that have no validated proof? Think about it. Um, I was like, these, these ladies are genuine, you know. You had your mother there as well. A, a oh, yeah, a heroinetic mother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just... She looks pretty good for somebody who's been on heroin for 70 years, eh? Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, what was she, 80, 85? Major uh, drug smuggler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Major drug smuggler. Evil woman. And, and oh, no, no oh. the family, none of the family will have anything to do with anybody. But, oh, look, here we are sitting next to each other. Yeah. yeah. And... Um, so I started saying, guys, have you seen in, in Greg's on Greg's profile? Have you seen you know the sisters and the mother? They go, yeah, yeah, Greg's already responded. He said they're all druggies. What? Yeah. No. Have you have you, have you watched it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said they're druggies. What? I, I don't understand. I don't understand how. Well, a looking at the video that you could you guys could have been on drugs, but I I, I just didn't think. I mean, I, I work and I, well, I have worked and I have yeah. many people. Mm with um, major drug addictions. Uh, yeah. And, you know, it didn't come across like that to me. Yeah. Um, These um, yeah. oh, no, look at their arms. So, and uh, not only that, no, you were, lines, no, scars. no, nothing. <laughs> and you were, you were very coherent um, and you seemed intelligent and you put your point across very clearly. And um, I just thought that can't be the only thing Greg has to say is they're druggies, which I don't think they are. Uh, well, except was, I'm, I'm, I work for Barack Obama, don't I? Yeah, he said it. that Landy was um, um, working for counterintelligence and Barack Obama was her handler. And I think as an alcoholic um, heroin yeah. addict, she's really highly functioning. So I'm really quite proud of her. Uh, yeah, you know? you, I mean, did you put that on your CV? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and look, look where I live. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but there was that as well. They said that you would deep state, you've been paid um, by, yeah, you've been paid by the sort of deep state. By the royal family. We, mm. we, were, uh, we were the connection for the royal family for their trafficking as well. That was a new one. Mm. Yeah. So. And why would they, why would they traffic heroin? Why wouldn't they traffic cocaine? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, it's far more popular. That's, but. Our mother is probably one of the most loved persons in the world. She's lovely. Everybody who meets her, they come away and they say, oh God, I love your mum. And, and people come down here all the way down to where we are, which is the other side of, the, you know, it's like as far away as you can get from Auckland. And, and they come down to visit her. Oh, for a weekend and things, you know, and send her presents, guests send her presents from overseas and stay in touch. and. Every friend she's ever had is still a friend and they all love her. I think I'm a pretty good judge of character or an initial judge of character. And I just thought, you know, oh, your mother seems lovely. And, and you ladies do. Um, and you say in that, I mean, you guys, I know, have, you know, lots of friends. And, um, you know, like you say about your mother, she, lots of people, like, you know, really care about her. And, yep. uh, mm. and then Greg has... Lost, Nobody. Well, he has... He's lost his family, well, he hasn't lost his family. He's decided to turn his back on his family, his friends, mm. um, and all he's got around him now are superficial people. Mm. You know, yeah. uh, people that are making money from this kind of deception. And I bet when it's all over and it's found out, he's going to be, they're going to just leave him in a second and he's going to have no one. Yeah. yeah. It's bad to and think I about, feel... but he's put himself in that position. Yeah. I fear that I'm going to feel sorry for him when that happens and go, oh, you poor thing. But um, I just want him to get mental help, just some psychiatric help. But he doesn't think there's anything wrong with him, so, mm. you know. Yeah. And he is functioning, you know, he's high functioning. He's completely yeah. delusional, but he's high functioning. And so, if he's not harming anybody, then it's fine. But when he starts scamming people and giving people false hope that their mortgages are going to be paid off, they'll probably get mm. their credit card, spending out on their yeah. credit card. Because, you know, it's all going to be paid off and there'll be no more taxes and things. I mean, 
how the hell are you going to keep the NHS going without any taxes? <laughs> it's hard to fathom how much damage he could have actually done so far to a lot of these people. Uh, yeah. You know, because a lot of them, especially if they got themselves into a bad financial way from it, they're not going to want to advertise that. Uh, mm. And, I, you know, I know of a lot of people that have donated and probably couldn't afford to and tried to get their money back and they've been denied it. But it's not just about the money, it's about the mental health, as you said. And um, yeah. I've, again, mental health is a big thing for me. I'm a, a mental health advocate. You know, I've had people close to me been affected by it. And um, I've worked in mental health and before. Um, so, you know, I, it's important to me. You know, the reason why I got so heavily involved was because people had shared with me that they've been adversely mentally affected. Yeah, same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, sort of we had one girl who say that you know she tried to kill herself all mm. over it you know and she spoke quite openly about it just because she was just getting so distraught and so confused and mm. then he wouldn't talk to her and yeah you know that's when it's going far too far it's always been about him he doesn't care about other people um and and he really doesn't he can just walk away Mm. You know, sure. you can give no everything, you give everything to somebody, all his attention and everything. He he gets the adulation, which is what he's always lived off adul adulation, and then he just walk away, just like that. So then, a professional series of documentary was made on Gregory Hallett by a guy called uh, David. Mahoney and David had been in films before. I mean, this guy was an actor. Uh, he'd been uh, most notably in a film called Rise of the Foot Soldier 4. Can you walk? So fucking stupid questions, Sam. Because I can't fucking walk. Look at me leg. Help me up, mate. You in? Oh, oh, come up. Now you listen to me. You, my friend, you're gonna be all right. <laughs> we'll get you walking in no time. Should have fucking done the way I like to charge you, woman. And in this documentary, you know, uh, David Mahoney had said, look, I, I want to investigate this. So we're making this documentary to investigate Joseph Gregory Hallett. But what we saw in three parts, so there was the first part, then there was Coffee with the King, and then there was Coffee with the King part two. After the amazing response of episode one, we thought long and hard about how the viewer could get to know Greg on a more personal level. So two friends sitting in front of the fire chatting completely unedited what he does he blows my mind away. coffee with the king uh, we saw nothing uh, all we saw was greg making some more wild claims david nodding his head and saying um wow you you tell some fantastic stories uh, no questioning of it greg continuing this story of him being the rightful king of england and also uh, holding the title Christ, and this was to do with royal marks. I really wanted to see something meaty, something for me to investigate, but throughout three whole episodes of this documentary series, uh, all we saw was him telling us that I saw this sign, and this means this, which it doesn't, um, and just more wild claims that had no basis of fact behind them, and this almost infuriated me. I mean, his fans, his loyal followers must have also felt that frustration. There was nothing there to turn around and tell to people like me who were trying to say, look, this guy is a fraud. There was nothing in three whole episodes of this professionally made documentary to solidify the claims that he was making. This was very important. But what if there was a new king? A hidden king. With this ascension to the throne and the current situation with the coronavirus, is this all tied in with this internal battle in the USA? Internal battles everywhere. It is the fulfillment of prophecy. The Jews have this prophecy where they have to destroy Europe before the Messiah comes. 
and Messiah just means someone whose earlier works are followed later. And all of these words have definitions like Lord, Christ, Messiah, Mashiach. Mashiach's born on a certain day during Rosh Hashanah after seven years of certain events, which just happened to be my birthday and the time of my birth, which makes me king of Israel. Now, Israel's supposed to be run by a temple, not a government. Mm -hmm. So in acknowledgement of me being Mashiach, Israel has not been able to form a government in the last 17 months. It's just unfolding like it's a glorious revolution and it's a bloodless coup and we're just getting rid of the old ways and the people doing the old the things in the old ways and we're doing things in a new way which is multi-dimensional from all angles from all media and um, it's just happening and we all know it's happening and not many people can put their finger on it and not many people know what the causations are one of the causations is that the British royal family has been flat lie royal since 1840. Explain that. Flat lie royal means illegitimate, not allowed on the throne. So coronavirus actually means we crown him in Latin, right? The whole world's closed down for Lent, the Pope's abdicated, the Queen's abdicated, and I've been named in movies, I've named myself in the documents with these titles, given the reasons and the history of why I have these titles, and it's been accepted, so I'm now getting phone calls from and interviews with American generals accepting me and putting me in place. And the documentation I've presented to the common law courts, Great Britain and International, includes the certified declaration of Queen Anne Boleyn's royal lineage and myself, Joseph Gregory Hallett, the certified declaration of Joseph Gregory Hallett, the Mashiach Christ Messiah and King of England. He's got a sort of series of documentaries that are coming out and like a sort of proper film crew and, and things that are in you know supposedly interviewing him objectively trying to find out the truth but it's very much part of this uh, propaganda uh, campaign to get his popularity higher and these supporters includes a guy called Jack Kidd that's K-I-D-D-D -D. now Jack Kidd is the brother of Jody Kidd and they are the great great sorry the great grandchildren of Lord Beaverbrook who's otherwise known as Max Aitkin and he owned the Daily Express and several other newspapers uh, in the earlier part of the 20th century and during the period of World War II he held key positions in the government under of course Winston Churchill ostensibly he was Lord Privy Seal towards the end of the war he was also Minister of War Production for a short time in 1942 the Minister of Supply uh, between 1941 and 42 and Minister of Aircraft Production between 1940 and 1941 um, he was also the Minister of Information during the latter part of the First World War under David Lloyd George. So this this man um, is very important. If you haven't heard of Lord Beaverbrook, uh, he is someone to familiar familiarise yourself with. He was a very important media mogul uh, back back in those uh, earlier parts of the 20th century. But he he also was was uh, very involved with with government itself. Um, and for for his great grandson, Jack Kidd, to now be supporting Gregory Hallett, not just supporting in a verbal sense by giving him uh, sort of verbal support in in online conversations that they've been having, he is actually the UK producer of his new documentary. So that connects, of course. Gregory Hallett directly to the British establishment and obviously uh, you know families can fall in and out of favour I suppose with the elite but we only have to look 
at one of his sisters, Gemma Kidd, and she married a guy called Arthur Wellesley, and he's the son of the current Duke of Wellington. So we're talking the very, very uh, serious <laughs> establishment, the, the inside circle, uh, very much so. So for him to, to, to be funding, presumably, and, and supporting Gregory Hallett is significant, I think. Gemma Kidd. Jerry Kidd, Makeup Limited. We've got ten officers and four resignations. Crocker, yeah. Mark Howard. Grace Fodor. Jack Edward Kidd, who lives in the West Indies. Barbados, to be precise. Was a polo player. We've then got Gemma Kidd, of course. She's the director. 1974, appointed in 2005. British makeup artist. And then this. Wow. I, I don't even know what to say, to be honest. Um, yeah. Amazing, isn't it? And there's a few resignations there. Of which this lady is not one of them. So, um, yeah, this is Jack Kidd, the King, and the Janae Maxwell connection. She is a director in Jack Kidd's sister's makeup company. Jack Kidd is not the only person to be an outspoken supporter of Gregory Hallett. We have a guy called Charlie Ward, who is very active uh, in the movement, if you like, a very active proponent of, of this agenda to have Gregory Hallett crowned as King of England and, 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 and Christ, essentially, which is, you know, astonishing and disgusting. But um, but this is what we're we're seeing at the moment. So. Here is a little clip from Charlie Ward. Yeah, sure. Um, I've, I've, I've been moving money around the world for a number of private clients, um, which range from the super rich to government officials to, to other officials around the world um, for, for many, many years now. And I, I tend to work in the Middle East, mainly. I live in southern Spain but I uh, commute between Spain and Dubai most of the time. And um, basically, I, I, when I was moving a large amount of money for a, um, a specific government, um, six years ago, I was with a member of that government who informed me just as we were traveling that they were going to collapse the world's economy in a few years time. That was six years ago. And then wow. two years ago, they said, we're nearly ready now. I saw him doing it. We were doing another job. We'd taken in a large amount of money into India um, just to assure that Modi got into power. Um, but uh, he said to me, we're, we're nearly there now. We've got Trump in power, so we're about, you know, we're, we're getting very close. And then I saw him again in December of last year, and he said, we're going to do it at the start of this coming year. We're going to collapse the world's economy. And I just said as a joke, really? How are you going to do that then? He said, you wait and see. We'll collapse the world's economy just like that. He makes the claim that there were two Jesuses, for example, and, and that that is the big secret of the Catholic Church. So... I mean, he's. I mean, he he's a complete con artist, liar, and uh, and blasphemer of the highest order, in in, in my opinion. Um, he claims that the coronavirus, and uh, and that coronavirus in Latin means we crown him, and that the coronavirus really is about shutting down the country, getting it ready for his um, coronation, basically. It is kind of funny, it's kind of laughable. I think it needs to be taken somewhat seriously and at least dealt with seriously and exposed. 
for the reason that it is generating so much attention. This coronavirus has caused an awful lot of people to go on holiday for a long time and to be stuck in their house with nothing to do for a long time. Nothing to do, that is, other than get on the internet and look up, look up stuff. You know, there's all these millions upon millions upon millions of people that are freed from the, you know, time-consuming burden of, uh, of, uh, of their day-to-day -day work and they've suddenly got all this time on their hands to learn about so-called conspiracy theories and without a grounding in and an understanding of the depth of the corruption of the political system believing in so-called conspiracy theories is becoming very very mainstream and I suggest to you that's not an accident that's not an accident they're working towards a revolution and how can you have a revolution without dissatisfaction widespread dissatisfaction with the way things are perceived to be at the moment in preference of the way that they think they should be or or and, and supporting people that profess and pretend to act against the establishment that they now distrust so i think we are having this coronavirus, as, as, as apart from everything else, and apart from the massive attack on our uh, on our rights and our freedoms, what it's done is actually mustered uh, and and facilitated the explosion of conspiracy theories, just be, just for the simple fact that people have had the time to look into them. You know, they they're, they're not absolutely exhausted trying to make ends meet and pay their bills. Um, and this is very, very significant. They didn't switch off the internet. They haven't taken down these uh, Q documentaries. You know, some of them. You know, sometimes they they hide them in different uh, platforms. They hide them on BitChute or whatever. They don't hide them very well, and they're very easy to to find. And anyone with a functioning brain cell can can find these things um, very easily. It, but it's a managed thing. They don't want everyone to believe these things they want to create a uh, a conflict situation where enough people believe it and that there's a uh, a balance between the, the maybe the black lives matter movement and related sort of uh, communistic marxist movements and the q movement maybe and you know it, it remains to be seen whether the the Greg Hallett coronation movement, <laughs> if you like, will uh, be a part of this um, agenda as well. Speculating upon uh, possibly this uh, this beast being in being in fact uh, Gregory Hallett, but he's an appalling blasphemer. He is an imposter to the title of Christ, which is due to only Jesus Christ and it's only now that the uh, that the belief in in Jesus has been eroded so much that he can actually say these kind of things and not and not produce widespread uh, disgust and uh, you know negative reaction if you like and it does also make me think about revelation as well you know because um because in revelation 13 it says and i stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy and the beast which i saw was like unto a leopard and his feet were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make, more, make war with him? 
And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations, and that no man might buy or sell, save he, ha save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So that's Revelation 13, and I do think that there are some interesting things to relate to to what Hallett is claiming. Um, Hallett has made this logo, and this logo is is it's kind of an ugly logo, but it has three sevens on it, as explicitly explained by Hallett. But if you look at the Hebrew numbers, the seven is very si the 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 sort of international number of number seven, the integer seven, is very similar to the Hebrew number six uh, or vav. And to me, the the number on his logo looks very similar to that of three Hebrew sixes. Also. Revelation talks about a beast rising up out of the sea and it is apparent that the, sh the shapes of the that form this uh, 777 supposedly come out of the sea. Um, it also mentions that he has the mouth of a lion. Uh, the lion is, is uh, connected to England and, and he of course speaks English. Uh, so I wonder if that is relevant there as well and uh, if, if we believe that these um, prophecies are going to come to pass then you know we, we are looking out for people that will fulfill the specific qualities that this prophecy has and, and, and whether he will indeed be uh, appointed by the devil the the dragon power on earth to have this seat uh, this, this this great authority over all kindreds and tongues and nations to basically be the the king of the world. So this this is what we're looking for. It seems uh, someone that will be given this power and to come out and 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 although it says a beast rise up out of the sea, I I have heard an explanation for that uh, that way of saying it is that the, the the sea is the masses of people. So this this beast will rise from the masses if you like from nothing to take this uh take this position and uh and 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 Hallett would fit that fit that bill he would be a person that would ostensibly rise out of the masses you know he didn't he wasn't a king before he'd rise up out of the masses and become this king of all all the nations but uh but this guy is uh as, as far as i see there's no question that this guy is a liar and he is an imposter he is uh he, he is of the antichrist mind because he's a liar and a blasphemer and a, and a and an imposter to that to that title so there's no question that he is of of this antichrist mentality you know as as, as time progresses and i see his popularities uh sort of diminishing uh, I now maybe am becoming inclined to believe he's just sort of a, a, a sideline and a just a, a little deception.